here by Rio Grande. San Francisco Sheriff's Office calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 267, is that in the hold up? That's just the officer. That's all. Roll me. During the month of December, I ask you friends of calling all cars to help us in the test of listener loyalty to this program by making at least one call at the Rio Grande station. And now the sponsor, the cast, and I thank you for your generous demonstration of loyalty that carried the cast to a most successful conclusion. In appreciation, we will bring you 52 of the best Calling All Cars programs that it's been our privilege to produce, and to continue to make available to you the finest petroleum product money can buy. Believe me when I say, and you can prove it to yourself, the real lube is the finest motor oil sold in the West. It is made so strong that it cannot break down under the intense heat of your plastic teeth. And what is equally phenomenal, the real lube never is slowed up by the coldest weather. Newly won friends are always happily surprised to learn that this great motor oil costs only 25 cents a quart in dirt proof, dilution proof cans. Real lube has to be good to be the running mate of Rio Grande Crack. A gasoline that powers more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency equipment wherever it is sold than any other brand. Remember to get some tomorrow. As an example of the splendid cooperation of this between law enforcement bodies, San Francisco City and County are outstanding. We have therefore asked William D. Hollingbetter, under Sheriff, to tell us Daniel C. Murphy of San Francisco County to open our program from the studios of KSFO. The work done by the police officers in tonight's story would fill an extensive file. It is a simple example of the unsung efforts of those men who have sworn to uphold the law and of the seldom exploited achievements of the policemen of San Francisco. In the words of Keith Quinn of the San Francisco Police Department, this story is one of the behind-the-scenes labor, pieced together like a never-ending puzzle, the labor that traps the burglar, catches the swindler, Brings punishment to the pickpocket, the shoplifter, the bad check artist, the petty thieves, and all those other swarming creatures of the underworld. whose crimes are in too significant to make the headlines. This is the story of a time that police departments throughout the country are faced with every day. It is a story of the kind of work that is every day convincing criminals. A crime is a losing proposition. In a small nightclub in San Francisco, two men watch one of the dancers. What are we waiting over here for? Come on up to the bar and have a drink. Now, what a pack of heads is going to hold it down. Oh, why wait? It ain't stopping me, and I won't stop anything. Unless you get the other face in a different shape. Now, listen, Mars. Don't talk about my girl that way. She's a hard Oh, she's not going to. Oh, well, maybe she's just me to new good. Nah, it's just lousy orchestra. They don't give her nothing. Boy, I can just see her among them swinging farms of goonies, goonies. Oh, well, she's doing all right among the swinging shoes right here. Oh, uh, that's just it. I'm going to take her away from all this. Yeah? The goony goony? No, oh, no. She ain't a real Hawaiian. <laughs> she just made up that way. Oh, yeah? Uh, right now, here she comes. I remember she thinks I'm a big star. Hi, Hi, Hiya, honey. I want you to meet up with my pal. Hello, oh, baby. I yeah, it was so good she was doing. She thought you were sick to the next. Oh, I bet that's what you say to all the girls. Anyway, I'm here to meet you. Nothing much. Well, I gotta get dressed. See you later. Oh, this is something. I do plenty for that game. Yeah, there's plenty other guys doing things for us. Maybe she's just uh, she's got a husband that would do a few things for you. Uh, she's got a husband. 
the moment Robert Brown was being interviewed by officers at the Hotel Congress almost around the corner, Harry Drury was used to standing with hands in the air. He ain't very sociable, mister. Yeah, but he'd say something if that there gun of yours went off. That'd be so shy. Yeah, gun shy. Yeah. Come on, let's see. Let's get the money and go. Now, wait a minute. You wanted some variety. Get that rope over there and tie his hands up. Do you ain't anything to be different? It's real thoughtful of him to have a rope already and waiting for us. Take one to check. Hold your hands, Jeff, buddy. Okay. Or you'll be using them to climb up the golden ladder. Hey, don't climb up so the cops can't figure out how to untie when they get here. Oh, no, wouldn't that be terrible? Ow. Yes, Jeff. Sure, yeah, that'll hold him for a while. What'll I do with him now? I'll get my down behind the counter. Down your door, buddy. <clears throat> he's talking so much. Maybe he ought to judge him. Ah, no. He'll no. find his tongue when the cops get here. Come on, let's go. I almost wish somebody'd walk in to one of these big lobbies when we're doing the job. Just to see what would happen. Oh, it's our luck. Guys, if something like that happens, I might need a real gun. Hey, listen to that there show, Hotel Mickey. We ain't paid a visit to this hotel before, have we? No, the name just don't happen to feel to me. How many times have I told you we can't be choosy in our line of business? Yeah, the place looks awful deserted. Maybe they'd be glad to have our business. Hey, did you bring that rope with you? Yeah, but anybody going by in the street could see us tying him up. We'll have to take him upstairs. I yeah, hope we get enough out of it to make it worth our trouble. Let's go. You got a room on the second floor? Oh, yes, indeed, gentlemen. If you'll just sign here, yeah, take a look at the room first. Certainly. Just come to the Let's keep walking and don't make any noise. This is a gun in your room. <gasps> a gun? What you going to do? I'm going to look at the room. And if you're trying any funny stuff, it'll be the last room you ever showed anybody. But I don't have any money. It's is all in the cash register. Yeah, yeah. thanks for reminding us, bud. We'll stop up for it on the way down. Yeah, after we've taken care of you. Taken care of you? What do you mean? You'll find out and make sure the room you show us is empty. Yes, sir, but why? Go on, go on, open the door. Don't yes. ask no questions. Yes, sir, okay. Now, listen, buddy. It'd be bad for the hotel's reputation if somebody got knocked off of this joint, wouldn't it? Knocked? Oh? Yeah. Knocked? Oh? Yeah, that's just what's going to happen to anybody that squeals to the cops, eh? Uh, you wouldn't dare. Uh, well, we wouldn't. Maybe you'd like to see us show you. Like this. No, 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 don't. Oh, stop it, now. You I hear you they shove your face into the floor just for good measure. Go ahead. Time oh. up. Don't waste any time on it. Okay, but it'll be a lot easier to put his throat. No, 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 no. If he lets out a yip, I'll just plug him. If he gets his lily white wrist out of this here nut, boy, he'll see your whole team. Oh, no, no, that hurts. Shut up, will you? I told you I'd like to have it. Give him a couple of slugs in his stomach. Hmm. Maybe you'll like him better than this here room. No, 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 no. Don't you. Please don't. I'll let you get one more up out of you, and it'll be your last one. I wish I'd put some more rope. I like the hanging by his feet from that there chin. Yeah, oh, I'm under the bed post. That's good enough. Okay, move over. I can't. Move over. I'll kick you over. Oh, Come yes, on. Yes, yes. Oh, it's your feet. Yeah, there better be some real money in that case register. Or we'll come back and give you a good working over. Yeah, nothing makes me madder than to go to a lot of trouble like this and just bring nothing. Hey, that ought to do him. Come on, we wasted too much time on this job already. Remember, buddy, one yup body and we'll come back and make a mess out of you on that there rug. That's the right fun. We've got nothing else to do until tomorrow night. Sarah, Mr. Sullivan registered in this hotel. Sullivan? Yes. Sullivan. No, no, there's nobody with that name here, Don. Oh, that's all right. Just open up the cash drawer and give us what you get. And make it snappy. We're in a hurry tonight. Yes, yes. Well, sixty-five dollars is all I have. That's all uh, right. Don't apologize. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Hey, uh, how you doing with a hula skirt, Bob? Oh, well, she knows I'm a big shot now. Yeah, does she know how you're getting all this, Jack? No, she never will know. And neither will the cop. Meantime, at police headquarters, Captain of Inspector Delaya calls a conference with Inspectors McMahon and Buck. I've told you fellows in here for a little conference on this hotel battery situation. I've pulled four jobs in the last four days, six all told. It's beginning to give me a headache. Me too. Who do those guys think they are? Jesse James, the second, third? I don't care who they think they are. I 
Tell me this is uh, who we think they are. You got any ideas, Buck? Well, I think they're just a couple of punks that have been lucky for him. The amateurs all right. They walk in and out of a hotel in plain sight of anybody that might be going by and leave fingerprints all over the place. Yeah, fingerprints that we have no record of in the file. That's just it. They're smart enough to know they we can't get a lot on them in the usual ways. Oh, I don't know. Only a couple of stats that think they were smart to get us away with stuff like this. And we've taken things up and down the coast for parole, disguised convicts. We've got no need for that. Every hotel search in San Francisco has complete descriptions of them. We've got patrol cars in the downtown hotel district looking for them. It's funny, kids, all right. We know what they look like, how they work, and everything about them except who they are. Well, they'll pull a bone in sooner or later. That'll give us a lead on them. They always do. Oh, we'll get them, but I'm afraid they'll walk into a hotel some night, get into a jam, and start shooting. A nice place would be the funny angle. Why don't they post these guns? Doesn't make sense. And as soon as they start operating in a way that makes sense, we'll have them. Well, if they're as dumb as I think they are, they're going to pull a lot of jobs first. Well, the more jobs, the sure we are to get them. But I'd sleep a lot better tonight if I knew where they are right now. <laughs> Again, converted to a dozen members of the robbery detail. The 
The available facts around the liars to exhort the afterwards and Frederick McMahon and Fred Buck for speeding across town. Your hunch is right about these lunch punches getting bloodthirsty. Yeah. Next time it's liable to be murder. Good store they stuck up. Just a hunch, but it may lead to something. Yeah. That was funny. Sixteen hotel pickups and one drug store. When a thug gets out of his regular line, he usually makes a slip. I think I hope his drug store job was it. And are we all? Well, here's Big Street. The store is right around the corner. Right in a small hotel district. Mm. Mm. A little place. Sure don't go after anything big. Yes, sir? We're from headquarters. We'd like to know if you can tell us anything about the men that held you up besides what you gave us in the report. Well, let me see now. You know, there was something queer about those two that I forgot to mention. Yeah? What was that? Well, those fellas have been in the store several times before. I sure was surprised when they pulled a gun on me. Maybe they were looking the place over. No, I don't think so. A couple of times they seemed to come from across the street. I figured they were living near here. Well, well, across the street. This was the slip they made, Fred. Come on, we're going to check every hotel in this block. I've been waiting for this. Fred, I think our hotel bandits have pulled their last job. I'm going to ask Chief Quinn for a hundred men to cover every hotel in the district. Do they go shoot it out? I almost hope they'll try to. <laughs> Robbery detail, McMahon speaking. Oh, hello, Merrick. Any the boys had any luck? Hey, what? Registered there in the same name? Take care. We'll be right over. <laughs> more coppers in this hotel than our guests. We've been here over an hour. We hope they don't decide to change hotels again. Wait a minute. We can hotel? Yes, I'll give him the message. Is that one of them? Yes. I don't know which one. He left a message for his partner. What was it? Meet me at the Blue Grotto. Blue Grotto, that's a nightclub over on Mason Street. Come on, Fred. <laughs> We've given you? Guys like that usually stick to one spot. You must have seen them out the time. Well... Come on, come on. You've got nothing to lose. Well, yes, I know them both. Cat Williams, one of our dancers here, is in love with Bob McGee. Well, it'll be a break for her to find out what kind of a guy he is. Well, you're too late. Cat eloped with Bob to Chicago. They took the 9 o'clock ferry to Oakland to connect with the train. It's seven minutes after nine right now. If we average 70 over the bridge, we'll meet the boat coming in. If we don't pick them up there, we'll be back. <laughs> Back again, lady. What's the idea of giving us a bum steer like that? They weren't on the boat and they weren't on the train. You better quit stalling because if you're trying to protect I'm them... I'm not. Honestly. That's what Pat told me. Okay. Maybe they decided to spend their honeymoon here in San Francisco. Maybe they couldn't wait until they got to Chicago. Where does Pat Williams live? She's been living with her husband. Her husband? <laughs> no use looking for a honeymoon there. Well, there's nothing else to do now but go visit the husband. Maybe he'll be willing to talk. Did you ever see one that wouldn't? Uh-uh. Not yet. She lives on the 900 block on Golden Gate Avenue. I don't know the exact number. Uh, that's close enough. If we scare the guy enough, maybe he'll give us something to work on. I told you those guys were dumb. I knew it turned into a triangle case. It never failed. Clarence. 
Pat and Leo are in love with each other. Can't you understand something like that? So what? She's been in love with lots of guys, even me. Oh, but this is different, uh, Clarence. Oh, yeah, it's always different. You just don't understand, Clarence. Pat here has got a soul. She needs to be free. I want to see her in a joint with a guy who buy her champagne instead of rock up liquor. Yeah, I'm sick of doing the hula. A fan dance is much more elegant. A fan dance? You know what happened the one time you tried it. Yeah, that's just it. The guys around that place is crude. They don't know no better. Just like Clarence. Bob and me want to go to Chicago and start life all new. No, you mean all new. Oh, you see, Bob. Clarence just ain't got no appreciation of art. Who's this art guy? That, that... Now, how do you like that? Well, maybe he's got some appreciation of this. Do you see these bills, Clarence? Mm-hmm. They're all 20 and 50. How would you like it if they was all yours? Say, that's real money. If it's not hot, how come you mess around with my wife? Hey, you are, Pat. How can I talk to a guy that ain't used to associating with big stuff? Well, he just ain't never seen that much money before. Give him a chance, will oh, you? Okay, okay. Now, listen, Pat. I'll take it slow and easy. You want an escape to get to Oregon. Well, here it is. Now, what more do you want? Well, that means I have to go up alone, huh? My wife. Don't go with me. Well, what do you think I am, a Santa Claus? Well, I'd hate to tell you what I thought you were. Oh, now, now, wait a minute. Don't get me off. You ain't going to get to my place. Bob, you've got this job, and he can do things for me. Okay, I guess I know what I'm like. Now, you're talking sense. This is the easiest show you ever made in your life. Yeah, I guess it is, is that? Well, if it hadn't been you, it would have been some other guy. I've seen this coming. Okay, here's the go. Cut. You want me to test the late train to Chicago? It's okay by me, big son. That's that. Probably not on you. What? Don't you know who's coming to see you? Nobody ever comes to see me. They come to see Pat. Nobody was coming to see me. Pat, I know it is. I could have gone out of here long ago. Get your hands up, everybody. Pat. You. Get out of here. Don't shoot me. Don't shoot. All right, Christian, kid. Now, where's your partner, buddy? I've been looking for you for some time, here. Yeah? Right here. Are you going to talk or aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll talk. There's a legal automatic, though. Fully loaded. Uh-huh. Got that from the U.S.H. Hotel Club. So you were going to leave for Chicago tonight, Yeah, huh? yeah. When I came with the headline in the paper that said the cops were going to shoot to kill the hotel bandits, I, I got kind of scared. Uh, take a look at your big shot now, Pat. Who are you? Well, I... Well, I ain't no I'm just Pat. Hey, they didn't have nothing to do with me and my partners. They're just friends. Yeah, officer. We were just casual acquaintances. I met Bob here in the nightclub, and he, he just sort of dropped around. Yeah, so we heard. Well, where's your partner? He's at the, at the Black Hotel in Oakland. His name's Marvin Thomas. Okay, Fred, take the boys and go get him. Yeah, but what's going to become of me? Well, uh, bring out the grass coat, sister. You've got just a half an hour to make that first show. <laughs> moment we shall hear the concluding thoughts of our story. Remember, friends, it is just as important to protect your motor as its power. And for maximum protection, use real leave motor oil. For maximum power, speed, getaway, and mileage, Rio Grande Crack, the most highly recommended gasoline sold in the West. Thomas was taken into custody in Oakland, and the two bandits were found guilty and sentenced to spend terms of five years to life in San Quentin, where they will learn most conclusively that crime does not pay. San Francisco Sheriff's Office calling all cars, attention all cars, the cancellation is all death, 267, regarding the whole death. The death in this case are now in custody. That's all. Rose is ready.
at this time, Rio Grande will present Miss Helen DeHagen in The Case of the Silver Sword. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.